Hello. Hello. This is your live streamer, Clark Sullivan. We're out here at Frank Ogawa, actually Oscar Grant Plaza, here by Oakland City Hall, uh, awaiting the start of the demonstration here or uh, protests, uh, sponsored by If Not Now and uh, Bay Area Landless People's Alliance and uh, one other group. As memory, my memory goes out on me just to, as we start doing this. But we're glad to have you here. Maybe some people are watching. And uh, let us know how the broadcast is going. I've got a uh, assistant today. Yay. Steep in thought. Playing Pokemon right now. But she'll be back. Uh, hey, Rachel, how you doing? Glad you could join us. We're, little, we're just getting started, so hang out. As you can see, there's not much going on just yet. But uh, pretty soon we're going to have some speakers and, and music, and it looks to be a good event. Uh, I was approached by uh, the people from If Not Now. They wanted to talk about how what, ha what happens to Palestine uh, happens in uh, here in East Oakland, or West Oakland, rather, and the intersectionality uh, between the two. And uh, so that's why we're out here today. We're demonstrating for that. And. Uh, talk about Palestine here a little bit and how colonialism and Palestine have so much to do with homelessness and colonialism has to do with gentrification and uh, because they're basically using the same kind of mechanisms to ethnically cleanse neighborhoods uh, you know they use violence more in, in Israel than they do here uh, but uh, well, you know, that, that goes without saying, too. A uh, very controversial subject today. So uh, if you've got anything you'd like to questions that you'd like to ask, just enter it in on the chat. <clears throat> then I'll either do my best to answer questions or uh, find somebody around here that knows the answers. So uh, thanks for uh, if you have any questions. So I'm not going gonna to try to keep my mouth shut about this issue because I'm always afraid I'm going to put my foot in my mouth because you have to be very, you know, it's a very sensitive thing, um, Israel and Palestine. Um, and people are tend to get a lot more emotional politically about this issue than any other single issue that I could possibly think of. The uh, situation in Israel right now, uh, it seems like the people there, like the people here in the United States, are supporting this quasi, you know, fascism. Uh, you know, Bibi's a fascist, and this other guy he ran against, who won the election, by the way, uh, Gantz. You know, he was a general, and he's promising for the uh, the genocide of the Palestinian uh, people, and uh, it's very frightening. And uh, you know, they've been trying to displace Palestinian people for years. You know, since 1930s, they've been blowing the place up and uh, trying to uh, murder Palestinians. You live streaming? Yeah. Awesome. We got some chants and uh, songs that we'll be singing today. Cool. Um, yeah. And remind me of your name one more time. Ariel. 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 Yeah. Um, and we'll let you know. There's going to be an open mic portion later if you want to come up and speak. Yeah. Yes, she's good. Once you get her going, she's great. Awesome. Can't wait. She loves talking about Israel. Stop it. Uh, uh, just kidding. I'm here to learn. Right. Well, no, you can learn. This will be your trial by fire. Right. You're already, you're already on the live stream now. Right. We're going to gouge you here. Right, we need your energy. 
Yeah, sorry about the lack of excitement here. You know, like I, I can come out here, I can organize, I can get people to come up with a protest, but I can't make the action happen yet. Now, I've been known to incite a riot or two in my life, but, uh, you know, the situation's not right. This shit ain't going to be happening, folks. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. I don't think I've been drinking too much Mountain Dew, right? right. What do you think of that Mountain Dew, anyway? Diet Mountain Dew, folks. Weird, yeah. It's like some kind of weird, like, anti-psychedelic compound guaranteed to take away your knowledge and insight. Yeah. I feel so warm. Yeah, and stimulate your, your, your kidneys. So, yeah, that's about usually what limits our broadcast here. There are bathroom breaks, but not today because I have a great assistant and she knows how to hold a, a monopod, right? No, she's looking off in the other direction. She's not listening to what I had to say, but that's okay. We're going to be just fine, right? Let's let you know the world's burning up. Um, please stop burning the Amazon. If you want to avoid global climate change in Brazil, a good way to do that is by quit eating Burger King hamburgers because uh, they're fed with soy that was grown in the rainforest. I guess we're getting started here. We're getting close. So we're getting close to getting started here. What do you think? All right. My assistant says her. It's getting to be witching hour, although I don't know the demonstration we are. No. Yeah. All right. Let's go through. Yeah. 
that into simply a playground for the rich. And we know, yeah, you can clap that up. Thank you. Woo. Well, we're not clapping up the system. <laughs> but we're clapping up the realization that we're coming here together to do. And what we're doing today is coming together, both as If Not Now, and as Pucks with Lunch. Can I get a hand raise from Pucks with Lunch? Lunch. Who will come and introduce themselves in a minute. Um, from the Landless People's Alliance, Chris Clark at A. Shout out with the Mountain Dew. Um, oh, yeah. uh, and the Landless People's Alliance, they come here really um, to stand for shelter and to stand for freedom and to stand for truly dignified, rooted communities here in the East Bay and there in Israel, Palestine. And I gotta clap up for that. So I'm honored, if not now, it's honored. We're all honored to be sharing space with a bunch of uh, people from entertaining. Um, from a ton of organizations around the East Bank who are working on this issue. We're proud to be like just at the beginning of a lot of these relationships and, uh, and building the groups that we're going to need because we know that these systems are long standing, that we are on colonized land that's gone through so many layers of destruction and displacement and death for so many different people for so long. Um, that these fights are long ones, both here and in Israel, Palestine, but we are here to show our commitment and to show our vision and to show our steadfastness in the face of people that are trying to destroy everything that is good in our communities and in this world, and to show that we know, our tradition knows, and that all us together know as a community that they're not going to win, we're going to win. And I hear, they're not going to win. They're not going to win. We're going to win. They're not going to win. They're not going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, it's always good to bring us together with a song. So I'm going to um, invite up uh, uh, a speaker from uh, Come to Lunch to give a uh, to give a little intro, and then we will. Um, uh, and then we'll uh, share uh, some stories from some unhoused friends of ours. Um, but um, for now, I just wanted to start with a really beautiful song that's based off of uh, some really ancient liturgy uh, from the Book of Ruth, which is all about the solidarity that we show going together as a community in the place we need to go, never splitting ourselves apart, only coming together stronger. Um, so you can repeat after me. It's also on some of the songs that you've been flying around with the wind um, and hit it out before. So it goes. Where you go, I will go, sister. Where you go, I will go, sister. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, sister. Where you go, I will go, sister. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go. Cause your people are my people. Your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. You're divine, my divine. Now we're gonna sing that again, but the first thing we're gonna do before we sing that again is everybody's gonna take two steps in towards me so that we are really going together. And then we're going to take two steps up in volume and in soul to the shama so that we're really singing about being together in this fight because our opponents are very loud. They have much bigger than entire megaphones. They have entire media corporations. They have entire large buildings that surround us here today. So we got to be really loud with the lungs that are in our bodies. Is that so Your people are my people. 
of what living on the street of Oakland is like. Homeless people are going to interact a lot more with police. So many times the way cops interact with us is vindictive and designed to cause us the most pain possible. Like the time, like the fact that they time their raids around paydays or during work days, during the middle of the work week. If your home is a tent, you wake up, you go to work, you get home and wind down in whatever limited way you can, you sleep, you wake up again. And any disruption in that process is going to be so hard to deal with. And when that disruption is coming back to losing your home and everything you own to a police raid, it's devastating. A very direct devastating attack. But the way they go about taking out us out of their homes, it all becomes a timing game. They put up a notice to move your tent with a date. We take it down on that day. Then we go find somewhere else to sleep, and if the spot they kicked us out of was a good one, we'll be back again. Nobody's gotten housed and nothing's changed, and it's all just a waste of time and life for everyone. Sometimes, though, they break the rules of that game with devastating consequences. They put up a notice at my tent, and it had a date on it. I was working, so I had planned to take it down on the final date they offered, but they came the day before the removal date without ever checking in or talking to us or anything and destroyed everything all in my tent being over. It's all about turning Oakland, which has been a black and brown city, which has been a city with tons of working poor people and suffered under all the anti-blackness and classist attacks. And now they want to turn that without having taken any actual Oaklanders out of poverty, but just moving in rich people to replace them. And they sweep us away so that they can turn this city into a tourist destination with no connection to poverty. People are coming in in droves with no interest in actually working to make this city a better place, but just coming to make money and replace poor Oaklanders rich outsiders. And they sweep us away so they don't have to look at the effects of what they're doing. This kind of shit happens every day. But sometimes it becomes especially disgusting. Shit that really shows how totally heartless and mindless this system is. Earlier this year, it was Valentine's Day. And I was living by the lake with another tent. No warning signs were put up around my tent this time, with or without the thing on there. No attempt was made to contact us. Nobody came to speak to us or warn us. But I left my tent on Valentine's Day Eve to sleep on a friend's couch, just as the smallest treat for myself on the holiday. And then I came back on Valentine's Day day, and all my possessions were gone. And it was raining. So the cops had no prerogative, no reason to clear us out on that day. It was just a mind game. Just something meant to devastate and break me as a homeless trans person. They wanted to have the maximum psychological effect. Manipulate me. Break me. It's all about casting away the undesirable. Whether you're black, or you're queer, or you're mentally ill, or really just stigmatized as mentally ill by the state, or you're a drug user, anybody you view as less than human, as trash, they want to sweep you away so they don't have to see you or think about you anymore. A few years ago, there was a video online of this rich jogger taking some dude's stuff from the side of the lake and just throwing it into the lake in broad daylight. Because he didn't want 
to see us on his manicured afternoon job. His desire to not see us was more important than our need to live. The homeless guy came back and kept his camp in the same place afterwards. But then the city just waited a year and finished the jogger's job for him and evicted the guy for good. The truth is, though, they can't just replace all of them. People are going to rise up and they have to. They can't kick out every single person faster than we can organize ourselves to stop it. We've got to believe that. We are working against a racist system, though. The Alameda County Sheriff's Department retweeted Richard Spencer, the white supremacist who is most famous for getting sucker punched, sucker punched on camera. And then he got up for that. Right? They uh, retweeted right Richard Spencer and left the tweet up for a full day. Alameda Camp County supports people and collaborates with ICE. They kick people out of their tents and out of their country. Shit. It can't be a crime to just survive. They are making the system that's trying to replace all the working poor people of Oakland. And so they're making it so we can't get housing in the first place. It has to be okay then to live outside. You shouldn't just be allowed to be homeless in a government facility or in a converted jail as they're planning or in a shelter. Politically, we got to be allowed to seek shelter and to live. we got to put pressure on the cops. I don't think we should waste time trying to reform cops, but without any pressure, they'll be even worse than they would be otherwise. The mayor's got to stop them. I said, the mayor's got to stop them. We said, the mayor's got to stop them. From playing these mind games on us and destroying everything we have. They still have to take everything away from those who got to leave. And so, much of what we're demonized for is the cost of policies we didn't create. They look at homeless encampments and say it's all shit, piss, and litter. But these conditions are more often than not a result of the needs that we're being actively denied. Most bathrooms are paying customers only. And you're a human being without a home, and we gotta shit and piss somewhere. And I've seen way more litter thrown into the lake by non-homeless people than by homeless people. We know we're more likely to get targeted if our shit is dirty. And these places are home, are our home. And these places, they are our home. So many times I found myself spending my time cleaning up trash around my tent that I didn't even put in there. As homeless people, most of us become homeless because of policies we didn't decide on, and then we're demonized for the result of policies that we didn't decide on. fucking Story. Especially that guy right there.
Touch it with the voice of homeless Oakland. We want human needs. We, we want human needs. Not developer greed. Not developer greed. We want human needs. We want human needs. Not developer greed. Chop, chop. Don't put profits over people. Don't put profits over people. Homelessness is not illegal. Don't put profits over people. Don't put profits over people. Homelessness is not illegal. Homelessness is not illegal. Don't put profits over people. Don't put profits over people. She's not watching us. She wants you to be out here wanting to speak to us. It's not illegal. All right. West Bank, in Gaza City, poor folks in Gaza City, big shout out to Palestine, remember to boycott Israeli products, divest of organizations that are invested, heavily invested in Israel, and sanction organizations that have do business with Israel. I want to bring up Josh uh, to give some, to talk a little bit about what we see and what we view as a situation going on in East Jerusalem and in the West Bank. We can actually say something that we just heard from Kate about how, how it's going down here and how it's going down over there. Israeli 
God bless you, brother. While Jews Thank you, brother. the diaspora, like us, have the right to make Aliyah and emigrate to immigrate to Israel. Palestinians can't visit their families. I better listen. Many visit listen their families. Listen this. I'm increasingly part of the Israeli restricting us. We saw this so evocatively just a few months ago when U.S. Congress member Rashida Tlaib could not visit dying grandmother without making political pledges that are antithetical to her values and the vision for freedom she holds here. The occupation is itself a policy of displacement. It is a regime designed to terrorize Palestinians so that they cannot feel at home in their own land. For decades, Israel has been doing everything it can to make life for Palestinians unlivable. Israel controls their movement and their water and denies them medicine and education. Israel rips out their native olive trees and raids their homes in the darkness of night. Under the Netanyahu regime, emboldened by Donald Trump and the resurgence of unabashed American fascism, the state of Israel has destroyed thousands of Palestinian homes and has taken thousands of innocent Palestinian lives. Just as the city of Oakland routinely destroys the homes and shelters of black and brown people living on the streets in East Oakland, the state of Israel has recently demolished newly constructed apartment buildings in East Jerusalem in so many brazen acts of violence to expel Palestinians whose families have lived in the neighborhood for generations. In the East Bay, poor people, many of whom are people of color, must choose Mayor Green. 
developers and people who want to turn more more quickly to just a tourist uh, tourist site like you talked about. Yes. Yes. yes, absolutely. That's an insight I would love to show. Thank you. So I'm going to welcome up. We know that this, that process, that vigils, that gatherings are meant to energize us, to show the power that we have together, to present the vision that we have for what this world could be, but that all that depends deeply on a partnership with on the ground organizing and shit that's going to go on way after just the sun sets in people. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. So I invite up a friend of mine, Natalia, to talk about um, some organizing that she does and um, give us some of her words. Trump got elected and started building homes 
for folks. They had a beautiful kitchen set up. They were providing food and meals to the entire neighborhood for free. They had a free store set up. The city of Oakland, under Libby Shaw, spent $75,000 to surround the, this beautiful village with police officers and to come in with bulldozers and demolish and evict everyone. Shame! 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 Shame. Shame. Advocates on sheltered people and house people together have been demanding for the past three and a half years that Libby and the city administration release public land in Oakland. We have pieces of public land that are sitting empty right now that could be immediately being used to shelter more safely people who are now living under on the sidewalks, on overpasses. We set up the top shed, which are a six-month program that ships people out of the state, or sorry, out of the state and out of the city of Oakland. And most many people who go into the tough sheds get evicted from the tough shed because the rules are ridiculous and you have to be in there with a roommate you don't know. There's a million things I could tell you about the tough shed, but they are choosing to spend all of their money on this, which is a six month program, instead of coming up with real solutions and allowing for community brilliance and community resource to come together to create other options like the village in Oakland and like what the East Oakland Collective is doing. So if you're able, I urge you to come and to witness with your own eyes and to support unsheltered people who are being forcibly evicted from encampments. It's really important that we show up with our bodies and we be there. The third way that I invite you to get involved with making change is through policy change. Right now we're fighting for major changes at City Hall. There's a new council person named Nikki Fortunata Ba who supports um, unsheltered people and human rights. She's amazing and we've been working with her to create policy recommendations for how we could do things differently in Oakland. So one of the things that's about to happen that we just won is that there's gonna be an audit of the encampment management team and all of what the what their program is doing and how they're treating unsheltered people in encampments, that's going to be audited. How much money are you, money are you spending? How many police are you using? What, what kind of shelter are you offering to people? So this is one of the ways that we are pushing to get accountability and transparency so that we can shift what's happening. We need to be making institutional changes. And the best way that we can do that as people who are living in Oakland is to be doing that at City Hall here. So I invite you all to either get involved with the Homeless Advocacy Working Group. We meet on Mondays, the second and fourth Mondays of the month at 4 p.m. at City Hall, um, or to get involved by being on our email list, learning about the East Oakland Collective or the Village Feed the People in Oakland, the Landless People's Alliance, who you'll be hearing from, and to start listening to people who are directly impacted because they know what they need and they can teach some of us who are housed what we need to do. And so we need to be listening and following their lead. Thank you. Amen! Can I get a shout for Roots? Hey! Can I get a shout for Community Brilliance? Yeah! Woo! Oh! Can I get a... I'm going to be there! I'm going to be there! For my unhoused siblings! For my unhoused siblings! Today! Today! Tomorrow! Tomorrow! And every day! Every day! I'm going to be there! I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Because that's exactly where I gotta be. That's where I gotta be. Um, some, uh, I'm going to pass around a sign up thing that people can be signing up on for um, emails and information from uh, all of the partner organizations today, from If Not Alpha Books, the Black and the Landless People's Alliance. Um, and I'm gonna be passing around also, we'll be bringing this back up again later. But uh, some Tadaka boxes, some uh, chance for actual giving of money and donations, which will be going uh, as per our commitments from investing in rooted communities from East Jerusalem to the East Bay and from the struggles that are happening for rights for unhoused people here and for Palestinians across the world. Um, to these, this money will be going to Landless People's Alliance to help buy new tents and to the Air Resource and Organizing Center, uh, which is a Palestinian-led organizing center here in the Bay Area. So please give generously. Remember that anything you got, um, it's a gift to you, and you have to be giving generously to earn what you got. So make sure you do that.
Uh, and while that's going around, then we'll be bringing it back up again. I'd love to bring up my friend, Mark, and Sharon. Clap it up! Woo! I'm trying to think of what I can speak about, but
exposure like that one time. And uh, it's part of why I'm committed to being out here. Uh, uh, for all the justices that were committed against my brothers and sisters out there, not only homelessness, but also uh, in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, uh, our civilizations are, I mean, they're similar, although not, not with the intensity of people that are suffering in the West Bank and in Gaza City. The enormity of the suffering there is just, it's beyond human comprehension sometimes. Uh, but the same thing happens here as well, and that uh, a lot of the tactics that the police use here in Oakland, in the East Bay, well, they were taught those tactics from Israeli soldiers, and um, a lot of our police department used to receive a lot of training from the Mossad, but they don't anymore because people like you came out and spoke in meetings and fought the city of Oakland and fought in Alameda County, um, and now no longer are the police department going out on once a year training sessions to show how the Israelis are beating the Palestinians up there. So that's a victory. And things are, I think in Israel it's very sad that the two people that were running for election were both highly, I mean they believe in ethnic cleansing, there's no doubt in my mind about it. Uh, they really want to get rid of all Palestinian people. So, uh, without developing too much into politics there, because it is extraordinarily sensitive issue, I think of that, uh, that I'm not much of an expert. But, uh, Anyway, thanks for letting me speak, and uh, uh, don't forget our meetings. Uh, and you can find us on Facebook as well, Bay Area Landless Peasant Peoples Association Alliance. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Landless Peoples Alliance! Landless Peoples Alliance! Thank you! Did thank you, Clark? Thank you, Clark! 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 We won't quit without a fight. We, we won't quit without, without a fight. Housing is a human right. Housing is a human right. You can't sweep our homes for cash. You can't sweep our homes for cash. Human beings are in trash. Human beings are in trash. We won't quit without a fight. We won't quit without a fight. Housing is a human right. Housing is a human right. You can't sweep our homes for cash. You can't sweep our homes for cash. Human beings are in trash. Human reaching their freedom. 
They didn't like that because they wanted to keep everything they had for themselves. They thought that it was a sign of sickness and badness and disgust that the Hebrews were poor and were wandering and searching for a home. And so they sent somebody to go curse the Israelites. To go curse them with the magic of the divine so that they wouldn't come in and steal everything that they had. And the Torah recounts, or tradition recounts, that the magician who was sent to curse the Hebrews stood up on a mountain and saw the tent city that was the Israelite encampment, saw the tent city that was the Israelite encampment, opened his mouth and curse, and out of his mouth flowed a blessing. God took the curse that was in his throat, replaced it with the blessing of his man, who was sent to magic away this group of undesirable freedom seekers, literally couldn't do anything but bless. Literally couldn't do anything but bless. That's what our tradition says. That standing atop a mountain and looking at a city of tents, at a city of dispossessed people, God won't let you do anything but bless. God doesn't want you to do anything but bless. When the police, under the guidance of the people in this building, goes in front and sees a group of tents, do they go there to bless? No. I said, do they go there to bless? No. No, they go there to curse. They go there and explicit in witnesses to be very clearly laid out by sin. What the Torah says is that when that magician got up on the mountain top and saw the Israelite tents, all they could say is Mad Tobu O Halecha. How beautiful are your tents? The beauty of tents isn't the beauty of the sign of a housing price. The beauty of tents isn't more and more people forced out of our homes in our communities. The beauty of tents is in the indomitable will for people to survive. The indomitable will of people to survive. That is the beauty that God saw of the Israelites crossing through the desert. That is the beauty that God sees every time she goes up and down Shattuck. That is the beauty every time she visits the village. Every time she comes to our city, the beauty she sees is not in the manicured beauty of that jogger who tried to throw a bunch of shit from a homeless person into a lake. That's fake beauty. That's not God beauty. The beauty that God sees is in the resistance towards the system and in the will of the people survive and claim their city, claim their Bay Area in the face of everything that's trying to get them out of it. And the last thing I wanted to say, Jews are called theologically to be here right now. That is a clear and explicit command if you are going to be claiming to be a part of this people, a practicing part of this people, a servant or a worshiper of the God that we call ours, you have to see a tent city God bless. That is the only thing. Bless doesn't mean just say words. It means change the system that forced that shit to happen in the first place, right? But the Hebrew story is not meant to just be a specific story about Jews. The Torah is a Torah that we have, but as it says, may my temple be a temple for all people. It's not meant to just be an exclusive thing about us. And so when people claim that they go to Israel, Palestine, and say this has to be a home only for the Jews, that this is our refuge and no one else's, they 
are again twisting and misteaching the Torah that we've been given. Because we also know that not all competitiveness are a symptom of a problem. People can also choose to live nomadic. That is a right you have in this world. You have a right to not think against the system The stop the sweeps. Stop the sweeps. Stop the sweeps. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, on their 
Thanks for the invite. Thanks for the invite. Pardon? Thanks for the invite. Oh, no problem. You're always invited. He's going to leave us in a little bit of a party. Right. Uh, right, we're going to cut it out here, folks. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan, Clark. Cutting it off. Uh, we had uh, camera assistance. From, uh, thank me, uh, and thank you to all of you for showing up. Ariel, providing camera assistance. No uh, what's your last name? Ariel Alexander. She gets credit. Our people. And uh, thanks a lot for. Uh, we're freed from Egypt. We bring freedom and dignity to others. Our covenant with Hashem is a two-way street. Though many talk about a promised land, we know that Hashem's promises aren't given. They have to be earned. We earn it through righteousness, and in turn we lose it through our wickedness. Those who are wicked to the stranger and to their neighbor are not the inheritors of Eretz Israel. They're the inheritors of Sodom and Gomorrah, which, despite the urban legend, were not destroyed because of sexual sin, but because of mistreatment of their neighbors. With Yom Kippur approaching, it's as good as time as any to look at what is righteousness. On Yom Kippur, we hear from the prophet Isaiah as he channels God's fury with the words, Is this the fast that I have chosen for you? Only a day for you to humble yourself is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? To be righteous, righteous in the bare minimum that one must do is to fulfill God's work, to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, and of course, to house those without shelter. In Judaism, to sin, to commit an abirah, means to fall short, to miss the mark. But when people are being torn from their homes in Israel Palestine and subjected to state violence, that is not missing the mark, that is active wickedness. Yep. Say it with me, that is active wickedness. That is active, active wickedness. wickedness. I agree. We also have to recognize that the same system of violence we tacitly benefit from living here. That's we right. stand here on stolen or running land, and the fact is that the people who control this land, the politicians based in this building right here, they're in bed with the developers and the landlords behind the housing crisis. The polytricksters. And it is time that we demand they put people over profit. Say it with me. People over profit. 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 There we go. Amen. Amen. And because we know from our prophetic tradition that words and visions can bring about actual changes in the world. We will envision a transformation that we want to see in our society by bringing down this wall before us, which symbolizes not only the physical walls that scar the land of Palestine and our southern border, but also those in our legal system that keep people from housing and sustenance that they need, that they deserve, that they have a right to, but also the walls in our hearts and minds. We're not only here, though, to destroy something bad. We are here so to build something good, to build a home. We're here to tear down a wall, yes, but also to build a home together in solidarity and community. As Binya said earlier, in Torah, when sent to curse the Israelites, the Moabite Balaam was overcome with the spirit of Hashem and blessed the Israelites. He said, oh, how great are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. 
Oh, we will build this world with 